You sure that's 12? You sure that's 12? we'll get right back to to the bass in here in a second uh down at hartwell i just uh I, I get a lot of questions about you know the Bassmaster opens and the pro fishing thing being from canada not a ton of people follow exactly how it works so i'm just going to explain a little bit about it and explain uh my situation going into this tournament down at hartwell so i've said in other videos and podcasts and stuff earlier this year i tried to register for the Bassmaster southern opens uh, it's pretty hard to get into. There's a, there ended up being a waiting list. Uh, had some issues with the Canadian credit card. Got a hold, uh, kind of put on my deposits, and ended up being 31, I think, on the waiting list for the for the Southern Opens. Um, so every year there's three sets of Bassmaster Opens, three sets of three tournaments. Uh, the top three from each of those tournaments uh, goes to the Bassmaster Elite Series. The champion from each goes to the Bassmaster Classic. Um, so that's that layout. But anyway, I tried to fish one Southern Open. Uh, it's just the one that worked best for my schedule. I uh, didn't really have to miss much in the winter and could have made it work with, uh, you know, work and other uh, commitments and things like that. So anyway, I didn't get into that. After the first event down in Florida, you know, some people that bombed and knew they weren't going to make the elites backed out. So I was able to slide off the waiting list into the second event down on Lake Cherokee. Um, just kind of went for the experience. I'd never been in a big uh, single boater tournament in the U.S. ever before. Um, so, you know, I, I tried it out for the first time from the front of the boat. Hauled everything down there, just, you know, showed up blind, pre-fished for a handful of days and ended up with a third place finish in the 225 boat field, um, which was like dream mode. Like, I was like, huh, okay, you know, this is a cool experience and whatever. Um, so then a spot opened up at Lake Hartwell again uh, for the third stop of the three Southern Opens. You know, and I was like, ah, it's in October. That's a pretty good time around here to be fishing. Can't, you know, can't really qualify. Probably not gonna do well again, but whatever, I might not get the chance again. So I, I drove down to Hartwell with a buddy, Cody Wood. Um, if you've been watching any of the Hartwell videos, if you haven't, go back, watch a couple, and then hop onto this one, but uh, you'll get a lot of laughs out of Cody. and. And our trip down there so you know really just went to learn a little bit more about a different part of the country uh you know down south carolina and georgia and a lot of it too was just to to kind of realign my reality of how these southern bass tournaments go because i, I could have a misconception about how the tournaments go even though i know in my head you can't just show up and get third uh fishing against a bunch of elite series and a bunch of people that live in the area and everything um so I just kind of, you know, went down to this one for a bit of a reality check and chased some spotted bass. I've never seen those before. And uh, ended up doing well here. I got 19th in, in that big field. So another top 20. Um, so, you know, hard to complain about that. Uh, got a little bit of money, you know, paid for the trip kind of thing. Uh, travel's insane expensive, but it was, uh, you know, all part of the experience and just kind of treated it like a trip. But now the situation I'm in, um, I wouldn't have been in this situation if I didn't fish Hartwell uh, mentally. So all the numbers are run and everything, the opens are all finished with, and I'm looking at the stats overall. And had I gotten to that Florida event on the Kissimmee chain, um, I only needed a 45th place finish to qualify for the Elite Series. Um, that's still not a given, that's not automatic. That's out of the money, but it's still, you still have to beat 180 other boats. So, I mean, not saying it would have happened, but <laughs> that's a low enough requirement to, uh, you know, to really weigh on you a little bit and, and things like that. It's kind of a bittersweet problem to have, um, you know, so whatever. 
I kind of looked at it like earlier in the year, I kind of looked at it like, okay, you know, went down to Cherokee, did my thing, made enough money to pay the entries for the next year. That was like, perfect. So this fall, there was an announcement. Oh, and this part sucks. This is the first time in 16 years where they've made a change like this at Bassmaster. But anyway, now you have to fish all nine opens events. Um, so that's the same as any professional bass angler, uh, like on the Elite Series or the BPT. Um, you know, that's a full schedule. It's like a full year commitment. Um, you need to fish all nine to have a chance to qualify now. They're taking the top nine out of all those for the Elite Series and pretty much making it almost impossible. Uh, you know, after this year, it was like, okay, you know, just pull up your socks, get in next year, do three again, and at least, you know, give yourself a chance. But now it's, uh, it's kind of out of reach. So yeah, I'm a little bit, a little bit better on the matter. You know, I get it why they made the changes. There's a lot of opinions on podcasts and everything about edging out uh, the working class angler. And uh, essentially that is what it did. That's, uh, that's where we're at. Sign up so on November 8th uh, for, for all the opens. I think we're uh, October 24th today. Um, I mean, logistically, it could maybe swing it. Um, and I'm trying to. Like, <laughs> it's the, it, it comes down to trying to find, you know, some sponsor dollars and things like that. And they just don't seem to really exist. Um, at least not enough to, to even take a bite out of it. So that's where I'm at now. Um, I'm trying as hard as I can to kind of rally up as much as I can to at least give it a shot because I know if I don't go this year that I'm really not going to get another chance um, down the road uh, is, is how it's looking. So that's where we're at. A um, little bitter right now. Still, you know, still have that chance. Uh, the dream's not dead yet. Uh, really hope that I can line it up and make it happen and and be able to share the experience with you know people from up here who who might not be able to follow along um, the other stuff and like watching the videos and listening to the podcasts and and you know we got a really great group of anglers up here and I kind of like uh, I like to be able to to help uh, represent them even though Gussie's already down there doing it it'd be nice to you know it'd be nice to throw a few more boys in the mix so. That's where we're at, but enjoy this video. My buddy Cody Wood and his infinite wisdom uh, misplaced the GoPro on our way back, so um, we don't have any day two footage, but here's some day one action, having some fun down on Lake Hartwell, catching spotted bass for the first time in the Bassmaster Southern Open stop number three. Now you're not done with me yet. Um, forgot to mention whether I end up going down to the opens or not, Still going to be pumping out content, podcasts, heavy on the gram, all that stuff. Just try to stay relevant to the fishing industry. Um, so if you could help me out, please subscribe to the channel. Like and share this YouTube post on your social medias. Um, anything like that helps immensely. So yeah, if you can take the time, it's much appreciated. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to put it on right away here. This is my tackle box. <laughs> Do you think my co or my pro's gonna mind? <laughs> I'm just gonna throw it in the boat like this when I get there too. <laughs> what the? F <laughs> Where are you from again, boy? <laughs> here, take your. Hold on, I got hands full of hooks here, <laughs> and you want me to lift the console? <laughs> here, take this too. Take that. You gotta call your pro and ask him if uh, what were you, you gotta bring your own cigarette lighter if he's got lighters in the boat. <laughs> do you have an ashtray in here or do I have to use your cup holder? <laughs> it's around 5 a.m. here on the 
poppy farm. <clears throat> Didn't sleep a whole heck of a lot last night, to be honest. I'm kind of raring to go. Had a decent day yesterday on the water. Found a few largemouth. Really not sure how this one's going to shake out, but this week's been about as much fun as you can have checking out a new lake. So uh, we had a good time and hopefully try to squeeze in that cut and finish it off with a bang here. So we'll see you out there. Tell me how it feels to represent Canada as the only Canadian uh, co-angler in the Bass Opens. Well, you know, Canada didn't get to pick who represents them, but uh, here I am. It feels good. <laughs> Got about a 10 mile boat ride in the pitch black to hopefully, where we're going. <laughs> hopefully Raz knows where he's headed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Man, I was wondering when that ice was going to break. <laughs> that took a while. <laughs> yeah. You can tell I'm from Canada, you can't even tell the damn difference. It's a nice one. one in the damn lake but <laughs> take him at this point is that a large mouth <laughs> <laughs> that's like <laughs> that was fat that'd be the mm -hmm. bass of all bass made a change throw an old net on the heaviest heaviest bt football jig in the in the boat Getting a reaction bite. Need two more to have a good bag. Two more little one pounders in there. But we got us a start. Only took five hours. Every all, all the other places ghosted. Twenty. 
got the program going now. takes a long time to fight these fish. I'm using my marabou rod from home. They just have soft little mulls it seems like and there's nothing really to hook them on out here so play them out. It takes a while but. Jamie Bruce we're ready. Jamie come on up. Five in the bag. This is like a good start. 14 pounds three ounces all the way up to ninth place. Hey I, I have to say a shout out to my friends and family back home. It takes a lot to get down here from Canada. First time this week fishing for spotted bass. I'm trying to rig up a cooler to uh, bring some of these little bratwurst back over the border with me. So thanks to uh, Anderson for hosting a nice spot you got here. Good job. And you're in ninth place holding on to a top 10 at the moment. Our Day two, Brucey. Tying up some more stuff I probably won't use. <laughs> Nothing like uh, 10 minutes before we take off to the launch, tying still. Yeah, in the dark. Had a good day yesterday though. Yeah, I'll say. Didn't didn't catch a bass for the first two or two and a half hours. Chest was starting to tighten up. <laughs> <laughs> Mine was tightening up too, but it was from all the Arby's. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah, put it together. Put it together. Yeah need, man. Need fifteen today to make the cut. Maybe sixteen. Gonna have to try a few different things. Woody went uh <sighs> Doc skipping all day with Brian Thrift's best buddy. All day. <laughs> he got him too, though. He's mid pack on the co angler side. That ain't bad, bud. Tough no. Start. No. Uh, I was pretty lucky to even catch two, I think. How many cables did you hook? I think I hooked six poppers on the cables. And what happened on takeoff? Wow, we cranked a rock shoal. It was a good start. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Hit a reef in your first ever Bassmaster tournament. First thing. Yeah, I didn't think you guys did that here. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was more like me at home. But no, it's a thing. You can hit rocks still. <laughs> uh, I was living proof. <laughs> yeah. We're just finishing up here. Going to launch the boat. We got a, like a 10 mile ride up to uh, up to take off in the dark. Raz guided us through yesterday. He did a good job at navigating. Super Raz. So, I'm probably going to follow his, follow his tail lights again. <laughs> we'll see you out there. This guy still thinks he's hooked. Hold him up, Bruce. Little potato. Nice. It's off your hold, Oh, ho. The cane pile. <laughs> yeah. Underwhelming. Underwhelming. <laughs> How much did you laugh in the boat today? Did None. It, none? Oh, you were no. this. You were serious mode. That's when you got to start cracking jokes, and he just starts jacking them. Right. 
You sure that's 12? You sure that's 12? JT Tompkins, he took home a trophy earlier this year at the Chesapeake Bay Northern Open. Turned out this event with 11.6. 13 pounds and an ounce. Gonna be a good finish for you though. 13th place, been a good week. Yeah, yeah, first time I caught a spot of bass was last Friday. Hopped in the local derby Saturday and fell in love with these things, but. You may just move down here now, right? Heck yeah. And hey, let me into the uh, first tournament next year. I'd probably be going to the elites this year. <laughs> yeah, all right, man. Good job. 13 1. We'll see where you end up. Jimmy Bellagy, come on up. Jimmy, out of Minnesota. Jimmy. Okay, she's all said and done. Had an interesting day today. It's pretty grindy. Caught a couple of big ones late in the day. Caught lots of fish. It was fun. Woody, uh, well. Woody's got a story of his own. <laughs> <laughs> he ended up with some uh, kid whose live scope died, and I guess there was a, a bit of a pout-a-thon and park at the dock and quit fishing for the day because your live scope died. Now, I ain't no Randy Blokit, but <laughs> that ain't bass fishing, bub. <laughs> anyway, uh, wound up 19th place. Missed the top 10 cut by a pound or so, but... Got a U.S. check to bring back to Canada, and uh, I mean, mission accomplished. First spotted bass was last Friday, or last Thursday, and you know, was able to be in the top 20 in a 200 boat tournament. So I'm happy with that. Uh, the goal coming into this one is really just to get a check and you know, check out this lake. And we had a bunch of fun, and I can't wait to come back here. So thanks everyone for following along. Um, do some liking, some subscribing, all that jazz. And uh, thanks for following along. We'll uh, oh, see you for ice fishing. Bye. Anything. If you can't catch one here, boy. <laughs> what is going This is insane. I don't know. They right? can't be. They are going nuts. What'd you give me for a bait? Chad, let's go. You need to tighten your up. <laughs>